Last Friday, students around the world walked out of their classrooms in protest of global inaction on climate change. And this global protest movement was led by climate change activist Greta Thunberg. She is a Swedish 16-year-old, and she also spoke at the United Nations, and she had a really powerful message for world leaders that every single person needs to hear. This is all wrong. I shouldn't be up here. I should be back in school on the other side of the ocean. Yet you all come to us young people for hope. How dare you? You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words. And yet I'm one of the lucky ones. People are suffering. People are dying. Entire ecosystems are collapsing. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction, and all you can talk about is money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. How dare you? <laughs> For more than 30 years, the science has been crystal clear. How dare you continue to look away and come here saying that you're doing enough when the politics and solutions needed are still nowhere in sight. You say you hear us and that you understand the urgency. But no matter how sad and angry I am, I do not want to believe that. Because if you really understood the situation and still kept on failing to act, then you would be evil and that I refuse to believe. The popular idea of cutting our emissions in half in 10 years only gives us a 50% chance of staying below 1.5 degrees and the risk of setting off irreversible chain reactions beyond human control. 50% may be acceptable to you, but those numbers do not include tipping points, most feedback loops, additional warming hidden by toxic air pollution or the aspects of equity and climate justice. They also rely on my generation sucking hundreds of billions of tons of your CO2 out of the air with technologies that barely exist. So a 50% risk is simply not acceptable to us, we who have to live with the consequences. There will not be any solutions or plans presented in line with these figures here today because these numbers are too uncomfortable and you are still not mature enough to tell it like it is. You are failing us. But the young people are starting to understand your betrayal. The eyes of all future generations are upon you. And if you choose to fail us, I say we will never forgive you. So that gave me chills. That made me tear up. And since that was such a powerful speech, it went viral, and this is the message that world leaders need to hear. Their global inaction is inexcusable. And, you know, there's all this talk of how inspiring Greta is and how she's really raising awareness about this issue. That means nothing. All of your words are meaningless if it amounts to inaction. So when she says, we will never forgive you, I hope that that terrifies people who are in power. I hope that they realize that this is something that future generations will absolutely never forget and they will look down upon us and people in power now and realize what cowards they were. So every single person on the planet has got to hear that. Nobody else is putting the climate crisis into perspective quite like her. Nobody's talking realistically about how much we actually have to do to mitigate climate catastrophe. And we're kind of fooling ourselves, right? The numbers that are true, the amount of greenhouse gas emissions we'd have to cut, it's too terrifying for politicians to fathom because they don't know how they can do that 
And even if they knew how to feasibly implement something like that, they wouldn't necessarily know how to sell it. So, I mean, global inaction is going to lead to our extinction if we don't take action. And what you see there is pain from a young woman who's seeing her future ripped away because people in power don't give a damn about climate change because they're not going to be here to see the consequences of it come to fruition. It's already happening, but I mean, they can still at least say, well, you know, these hurricanes that are happening more frequently, this isn't necessarily due to climate change or whatever. You know, they can try to pretend as if it doesn't exist and bury their heads in the sand. But what Greta Thunberg is doing is she is pulling their heads out of the sand and she's dosing all of these world leaders with really cold water. She's saying, look, either you act or this is what you have to live with. This is how history is going to judge you. Nice words won't cut it. Action is what we need. So I absolutely loved what she said. She is so inspirational. You know, when I was 16 years old, I was not thinking about climate change. I was not thinking about these really big global issues. So for her to raise the salience of this issue and lead a global strike that took place in 150 different countries, I mean, if we're able to somehow survive climate change and the human species goes on, she is going to be in the history books with credit as one of the leaders in this fight. No doubt. There are others, but, you know, her rise is so important. But, you know, this was powerful. It caught steam. It went viral. So, of course, how do conservatives respond? Because they have to defend the Republican Party's inaction. So what do they do? Well, they viciously attack Greta Thunberg, unsurprisingly. Right-wing propagandist Ryan Saavedra tweeted, This speech by far-left activist Greta Thunberg is absolute madness. Eric Erickson responded, saying, Children of the corn level scary here. They're going to move quickly to violence to overthrow democratic governments. Dave Rubin says she shouldn't be up there, and the people who have stolen her dreams with empty words are not the people she thinks. Documentarian propagandist and criminal Dinesh D'Souza tweeted, Don't rail against this poor kid, just pull back and listen to the craziness, and you can appreciate this manufactured vignette for what it is. High comedy. Now, he also compared her to Nazi propaganda. We also had Laura Ingram of Fox News compare her to uh, Children of the Corn. I, uh, anyone else find that chilling? A time of tribulation has come. A test is at hand. The final test. I can't wait for Stephen King's sequel, Children of the Climate. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, maybe her advertisers should boycott her this time, but for good. But, you know, to be fair, that wasn't even the worst attack. Because one attack on her, one attack on this child was so bad that Fox News literally came out and said, we're not going to invite him back on again because this was so bad. So the Daily Wire's Michael Knowles criticized her and attacked her, frankly, essentially because she is autistic. None of that matters because the climate hysteria movement is not about science. If it were about science, it would be led by scientists rather than by politicians and a mentally ill Swedish child who is being exploited by her parents and by the international How dare left. You. So what you're seeing here is a political movement and a religious movement, and it's uh, fulfilling uh, religious and political goals of the left, but it isn't doing very much for science. Chris, you had a visceral reaction to that. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, you're a grown man and you're attacking a child. Shame on you. She's trying I'm to not, do what I'm you think the is, left thinks for right. And by the way, now ra relax, skinny boy. I got this. Okay, you're attacking a child. You're a grown man. Have some. Coof, I'm not. I'm attacking okay, the left for exploiting television. a mentally I, maybe on, ill child. Maybe on your maybe on your podcast, you get away and say whatever you want because nobody's listening. You're on national television. Be a grown up when you're talking about children. She's trying to save the planet because your president doesn't believe in climate change and kids need to take to the streets to worry about their future. You are despicable for talking to her about her like that. And you should apologize on national television right now. I mean, just when you thought that the Republican Party could not get any worse, they start attacking a child who is autistic. So he says if this movement were about science, it would be led by scientists rather than politicians 
and a mentally ill Swedish child. First of all, uh, science is apolitical. We don't expect scientists to construct public policy. We expect them to conduct research and do science, if I'm allowed to use science as a verb. So that argument is moronic. Second of all, she has autism and you are attacking her because of that. Shame on you, you disgusting, smug cretin. And he tried to defend himself saying, well, no, 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 I'm saying that they're taking advantage of her people, her parents, activists. They're taking advantage of her because she's mentally ill. And that's what's gross. First of all, mental illness and autism, these are not the same things. Second of all, to suggest that someone who is autistic can't possibly think for themselves and that they're being used is degrading. Did you say this about the Parkland victims when they came out and started protesting in order to get gun reform? Did you say, well, you know, they're being taken advantage of by adults because they can't think for themselves? No, you didn't say that because they're not autistic. You specifically said this about her because she's autistic. And as someone with an autistic family member, go fuck yourself, you disgusting goon. I mean, how low Republicans go, there's just, there's no bottom to that. They will attack children if it means they promote their political agenda. And in this instance, it is shielding the fossil fuel industry and corrupt Republican Party from taking action as our planet dies. What a fucking disgrace Michael Knowles is and all of these Republican goons are. Dave Rubin, Dinesh D'Souza, these people are psychopaths. And if you follow them, if they are an influence in your life, find better role models because these people don't have your interest in mind. They are promoting a suicidal party that does nothing as our planet becomes uninhabitable. If that's not crazy to you, if that's not something that gives you pause, I don't know what the fuck to say. This teenager is a hero who has accomplished more in the last year than this Daily Wire third stringer will in his entire lifetime. And he has the nerve to suggest that she can't think for herself and that she's being taken advantage of, and that she doesn't genuinely care about the environment. I, I, I don't even know what to say. There are no words to describe how repulsive and morally bankrupt modern day conservatism has become. I don't know what to say.